Hello and welcome to my channel on the hood crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's on the hook well as you can see from Crystal back here she's modeling the America tank and that is my patriotic tank that I wear actually several times a year there's flag day and July the 4th Memorial Day Labor Day all these national holidays that are patriotic in nature and today is the epitome of our patriotic uh, holidays this is july the 4th independence day when we declared our independence from the uh, british commonwealth that was uh, kind of where we came from but we decided we wanted our own country and so we wrote the constitution and we wrote the declaration of independence all that and we decided that we would be our own country so the 13 colonies did that and actually it was a wonderful thing to do because where are we now we're in a wonderful world in a wonderful country that has great rights and a great constitution so we need to support that and make sure that um, we keep our rights and everything's going to be great 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 America is the best country in the world to live in I know those of you who are overseas uh, you may feel the same way about your country and you should because we should feel good about where we live but America is my home I've uh, obviously always lived here and I, I love my country so I want to show my patriotism by wearing the America tank well I wanted to model a um, a new pattern that I'd made or actually not new pattern but a new rendition of a pattern so Crystal offered to model my America tank and she's also sporting a couple of flags up here so if you'll notice those are her patriotic flags and she's sporting those and she's going to stay in the uh, video with me today so I'm going to let her stand right there and she can remind all of us that it's a wonderful wonderful day July the 4th so I hope you're having a great day well, today I'd like to shout out Fran, F-R-A-N. Fran is one of my Etsy customers, and she um, supported my Etsy shop in a very big way this week. So thank you, Fran. You know who you are. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everyone who goes to my Etsy shop and finds patterns that they might like to to make. A crochet patterns are basically all easy patterns. They're not difficult. They are focused on beginning and advanced beginners in the crochet world. And if you love to crochet and you've only crocheted afghans or scarves or something, break out and crochet some wearables. I think that it's important to wear your hobby if you can. It's so important to wear your hobby. And I enjoy wearing mine. Every time I go out, I usually have on something that I've made because as you can see back here all of my uh, patterns I've made a prototype of each one of them and I have two racks of those and uh, 85 patterns out there and then I also have my diamond painting hanging up <laughs> my newest version of Santa and the star there and then uh, Francis of Assisi which I finished I'm preparing to seal that diamond painting because I'm finished with it let me go over here there that diamond painting and also the two sisters on the terrace which I'm not finished with but it, it'll just be maybe two or three more nights and I'll have that all done and I'll show you the progress on that here in just a couple of seconds but anyway let me get back to the America tank that is what Crystal's wearing today um, that's what it looks like on my Etsy shop very easy to make and this is the this is the yarn that I use this is called Cotton Fair whoops let's get it right this is called Cotton Fair. This is by Premier. It's a cotton and acrylic, half and half. Um, there are 200, I'm sorry, 313 yards on the ball. It's huge. It's, it, it, you don't need very much to make this. Maybe two or three skeins at the most. Three, I think, is all I ever needed to make any of the tops that I used this particular uh, cotton acrylic yarn for. This is a fine number two yarn but it is so easy to crochet you just can't even imagine it i think i used a j hook for that <laughs> i was really uh back in the day but you can't see through it i mean it looks like you might be able to here but when you put it on over your regular undergarments you cannot see through it i don't have this particular colorway anymore and i found a similar colorway on the premiere site it was the uh, premiere basics in the i believe it's americana colorway and I ordered a couple of skeins just to take a look at it so they'll be here pretty soon and I'll show those to you as soon as I get those 
but I wanted to order those just to see what they look like. It's hard to find a red, white, and blue yarn that looks this beautiful when it's crocheted. I just think that's so beautiful. I wear this quite often. I, I wore it yesterday to church, and I wore it with a denim skirt and a pair of denim kind of heels, uh, strappy heels. It was really cute. I really liked wearing that, and it was so cool and comfortable. And uh, a lot of other people had on red, white, and blue, too, because we are a, a patriotic nation and love our country. So we want to display our flag colors. Just let's talk about what I'm wearing today. This is in my Etsy shop. I think I... I published it a couple of weeks ago, yes, the week before I did uh, the publish the Dorothy sweater, which I did last Monday, but uh, the Monday before that, I believe I published this sweater pattern, and it's called the Slouchy Cardi, and it is just a very casual cardigan that you crochet, um, I'll show you the back of it. It has a one by one rib at the bottom. It has a one by one ribbon rib on the sleeve and not a rib here. I just finished it with a single crochet row along the front. I, I did not use the reverse single crochet on this one. I just did a row of single crochet up the front, around the back, and down the other side. And then I did short rows in the back. And I'll get up here where you can see these. Hope you can see that. I did short rows in the back to cover up the V that, that appears when you sew that back seam. So when you sew the back seam, you might want to sew it below the center line. So your back seam won't be as long as the measurement from the bottom of the cardi to the midpoint. So I have you fold the cardi in half and you want to start sewing three inches below that midpoint so that your seam is shorter and then your cardi will fall over your shoulders better and you know after you make one you'll realize that that seam was either right or you need to move it a little bit and so I moved mine down either another inch and this one is three or four inches below the midpoint and it made the back seam shorter and I just made up for that with the short rows at the top they're just like they are in the pattern and then it falls a little bit uh, better in the front. It falls a little bit more even in the front. And so I really like that when it's even with the back. The first one I had was mostly like this. It was sort of a, a kind of a crop in the front and I didn't love it. I didn't love it. So uh, I, I made that from Kobu yarn, which is a wonderful yarn. I really love the yarn, but I'll tell you what yarn I used to make this one. This new summer slouchy is made with best value yarn. This is from Mary Maxim. This is the spring ombre colorway. It is pink and green. I don't think there's anything else in there. There's a little bit of chartreuse in there, a tiny bit, but it's mostly pink and green. Very, very summery colors, and they still have this in stock. They do not have the neutral ombre in stock that I made the Lucy Cardigan from. Um, that was, you know, four or five weeks ago, I think I released that pattern. The Lucy Cardigan I made with the neutral ombre, which is black and brown and tan. Very beautiful, beautiful yarn. Now they're out of that at Mary Maxim's. They don't have any right now. I checked the other day and they don't have it. But they do have the spring ombre still in stock if you're interested in this one. I'm not sponsored by Mary Maxim at all, not at all. I just, I, I love this particular yarn, this best value yarn. Um, it just behaves very, very nicely. It's very soft. It's not like Red Heart Super Saver. This is much softer than that. It has um, a tiny bit of a halo on it. I guess that makes it soft. I don't know. But it's all acrylic, 100% acrylic. And on each uh, skein are 342 yards. 342 yards, 100% acrylic. So that's a really good yarn to use for this particular pattern. I used a skein and uh, I used two skeins actually and the second skein I had about 30 yards left of the best value yarn from skein number two. So I used one skein and then two skeins. Um, the second skein I had a little bit left over. So that's what I did with that. Anyway, that's I wanted to show you that. This is the slouchy cardi again. Love this pattern. It's very easy and it will fit anybody. It will fit anybody. And most, I think all my patterns fit anybody. If you take the right measurements, like I tell you to in the pattern, 
you can make a, a garment to fit you the first time. It, you won't have to make it three or four times and then go, I'm not doing that anymore because it never fit me to begin with. Or if the first one doesn't fit, you go, oh, I don't want to make that again. I want to move on to something else. So this way, if you make it right the first time and it, and it, it works for you, it's, it's great. It's just great. Now, for the slouchy cardi, I did a few things differently. So I wanted to tell you about it. Um, I made the slouchy cardi. I chained up with an L hook, and I made the cardi with a K hook. And if you want to take notes, you can do that um, just very quickly. It's not that much different. Um, the panels were 36 inches long from the front bottom to the back bottom, 36 inches long and mostly the same as the other. I did put ribbing on the sleeve, did a row of double crochet, and then I did two rows of one by one ribbing. So that'll give you the recipe for that. And then of course the bottom is the same, except that I added an extra row of ribbing on the bottom. So I made the ribbing a little bit wider. I really like the look of that. Let me get it around here, there it is. I like the look of that ribbing. It's um, a little bit um, more of a statement at the bottom of your slouchy cardi, so that's, that's what I decided to do. So you can make it that way or the way I have in the pattern, and you can make changes or not, however you want to make that. So that's the slouchy cardi that I'm wearing today. I'd like to move along to some whips that I'm working on today. Um, well, I've been working on them all week. As you remember, you may remember, those of you who are with me often, you might remember that I bought some of this Vitalana Lofty DK by Knit Crate. It came in a monthly subscription box, which I do dearly love. And this came in one of the boxes. There were two hanks of this, and I'll read about it real quick. It's 48% merino wool, 20% baby alpaca, 32% organic Pima cotton. And it's a DK weight, 274 yards on the hank. Very, very soft. It's a chain link. As you can see that, look at that great camera. It's a chain link yarn and uh, very, very easy to crochet with. It does not split. Um, I really love it. It's so, so soft, but it is so loud. This is a very loud color and I thought I really liked it, but I didn't like it when I paired it with some green merino wool and I did not like the way it looked. I, I just looked like a clown suit. I just really, and I was doing the green around the neck and I didn't like it. So I decided to frog that out and I started a, an Anastasia sweater and the Anastasia sweater pattern will, should be out this week. I'm almost finished with it. I think I'm on the home stretch and I want to be sure that everyone can make it and it will fit everyone. So I want to be sure that it's just right before I, uh, before I publish this pattern. Now I originally made it from this yarn, which I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but I blocked this and it turned out so beautifully. I just, I can't say how much more pleased I am with that particular sweater. And I'll put a picture of it uh, on one of these sides here. <laughs> I'll put a picture of it and you can see it. But I think that the yarn that that Becky died for me, a friend of mine died this in a pink and kind of a coral yarn. It's a tonal pink. It's so gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And when I made it up, it, it was even more beautiful. It was it was made from Knit Picks, and here's the label, Knit Picks Swish DK, and it is made from 100% superwash merino wool. So I blocked that by washing it, you know, soaking it in a big bowl of tepid water with some eucalan, E-U-C-A, L-A-N, Yucca Land, and you can buy that on Amazon. Uh, you can buy it from a lot of the YouTubers. You can buy it from people who hand dye yarn. A lot of people sell it, but it's Yucca Land, and it oh, smells wonderful. Now, I don't know, I'm really dating myself, but my mother wore white shoulders uh, cologne, and it smells a little bit like that because I smell it, and I thought, oh, that smells like my mother. <laughs> So she wore white shoulders a lot because that was popular back in the 40s and 50s. So uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you, I blocked it and I squished it into the eucalyptus, left it 30 minutes, set a timer. I took it out and then I squeezed all the water out. I did not rinse it. I squeezed all the water out and I laid it on my dryer. I just laid it on the top of the dryer 
and I just shaped it to where it looked like it was going to be okay. It was flat. I shaped it and I left it for a couple of days and it dried. I went in there and I shook it and it was, it draped so beautifully. I can't believe it was so perfect. It was so perfect. I was so excited when I saw it and I tried it on. It was very drapey and in the back where it looked like it was a little bit lumpy because um, I had increase and what it did was it took those increase rows and it softened them down so that the back was just as flat and drapey as you just wouldn't believe it. It looks so gorgeous. And so I decided that I was going to uh, block that sweater. And I'm thinking when I block this new yellow sweater that it will look just, so, just like it. Now, here's what I'm doing with this. I'm making the Anastasia sweater with the yellow. And I wanted to make it at least twice or at least get through the yoke twice so that I would make sure that I had all the increases just right so that anyone could make this in any size they wanted. And of course I'm using measurements. I'm not using stitch counts. I don't use stitch counts. I hope that I never have to. I may eventually sometime have to use stitch counts. but. And I might say increase one or increase two, but I don't say until you have 98 stitches and then if you have 97 or 99, then you have to make a decision about frogging or finding and it just takes too much time. And honestly, it makes no difference in the end in my patterns because they're very um, easy to make and they're not difficult. They don't have a lot of uh, difficult stitching in them so that if you get to the end of the row and you're missing a stitch, then you just, you know, add one or skip over it. I'm not a perfectionist as far as that goes. And if you're wearing something, nobody's going to say, oh my gosh, I think you have more stitches over here than you have over here, which wouldn't happen on this. But I mean, um, you don't want to worry about that. You cannot worry about that. And I think now that I'm learning knitting, and I'll talk about that later, uh, there is probably that mindset that it, if you don't have the exact number of stitches in knitting, it may be a disaster. I don't know. I think it probably would because from what I can tell, I think people actually... Um, have to worry about that. I'm not really sure how that works with knitting and I'm sure I'll find out. But this is what it looks like in crochet. This is what the Anastasia sweater looks like. The yoke as I'm getting started in the uh, yellow version of it. And beautiful, and really soft. I love this yarn. It's just so loud. So it's got to be a summer sweater. It's not going to be fall. And if it is fall, I'd have to wear it under a denim jacket or something. I might be able to get away with that. But for now, I'm thinking that this is a summer sweater. So I'm going to try to finish this. I'm working diligently on it every morning. And I have two other whips that I'm working on. And I'm going to show those to you right now. As you know, the Dorothy sweater was made with dotty yarn. Love in the dotty yarn. It's so soft and so light. This is by Premier. I'm not sponsored by any of these yarn companies, so don't think that I am. I am not sponsored by them. This is a light number three yarn. It is very easy to crochet with. It's soft as it can be and as light as a feather. So those are the good things about dotty. This is what it looks like knitted up. There it is. And this is what it looks like in crochet version. It looks like that. It's very beautiful in crochet. Love crochet. I love knitting too. I'll let y'all know about that here in just a minute. Anyway, this is the dotty sweater and I'm making the dotty sweater from this new color. This is called Prairie. It's, it has a little bit of a uh, an off-white background and then brown and blue specks. A little bit of gray in there. I don't know why. But anyway, it looks pretty when you get it crocheted. But I do love it. I do love it. Just like I love the garden party colorway. So beautiful. I made the Dorothy sweater from. All right. So this is another Dorothy sweater. But this is a a version in the fall color. And I'm making this a little bit longer. As you can see, look at that. I'm making this longer let me get over here there it is i'm making it down here probably there's my waist right there there's my waist so it's about four inches below my waist and i'm going to make it longer sleeves i'm going to put some elbow length sleeves in this and if i get really crazy i might add a long sleeve i don't know <laughs> i might because it's going to be a fall sweater and um, the sleeves are crocheted right into the fabric like I did with the Dorothy sweater, but it's going to be a little bit different. Now that's the back of the sweater. I'm finished with it 
and I'm getting ready to start the front so I should have that done in not too long a time and this is living in my little on the hook crochet bag um, love this bag and y'all do too y'all have been y'all have been um, buying those up and I'm not going to order any more before Christmas I don't think um, I think they're all going to be sold out I don't think I'm going to order any more right now maybe next year I can't promise that, but I, I think that's where I'm going with it. So anyway, the dotty sweater is living in my pink on the hook crochet bag. Love this bag. I love it. I love all my, all my bags. I think they're pretty. Now this one is in one of Joe's bags. This is a Joe for totes bag that uh, she made for me a long time ago. Actually, I think I bought it and she just brought it somewhere and I bought it because I really liked it. But I do love the colors. I love red and black for winter time. So cool. Now, I am knitting. Um, I'm, I'm learning to knit, as y'all know, and y'all have seen this before. This is my first attempt at knitting, and I'm really loving it. I think if you knit with really nice yarn, it makes a big difference. Um, I would think. I don't know that. I'm not a knitter. You knitters can tell me in the comments, down in the comments. Let me know what you think about that. If you find that knitting with a luxury yarn is easier than knitting with maybe a big box yarn or something um, less luxurious. <laughs> is it different? This is actually, um, this is chunky. Somebody asked me this too. I wanted to tell you what it was. This is chunky yarn by Malabrigo and the colorway is Acorn 433 Acorn. And um, this, let's see what this is made from. I guess y'all probably read that already. 104, 104 yards on the hang, 100% merino wool. And I don't love the color, acorn. I love it okay. I'm just not loving it. I guess because I'm knitting with it. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I don't love it as much because I'm not, um, I'm not good at knitting yet. I, I may not ever be, but. I did make a mistake and I want to show you what I did because maybe you make the same mistakes I do. I don't know. I don't know how I made the mistake. I thought I was knitting along just fine and I was right here. I was knitting along just fine. Everything was great. The sides were even and then all of a sudden I look down and I see that I've got an extra couple of stitches along here. So what I did just to practice this is going to just have to be a practice scarf and i won't care if it has some weirdness on it but this i'm i'm actually right here i decreased a stitch now let me tell you how i did that you knitters can tell me if that's right but i knit two together that's k2 tog knit two together and i just knitted i just pushed the i pushed the needle under two stitches and then i treated it like one knit stitch and popped it off and I think I decreased a stitch because look, see, look, this looks like it's a little bit smaller than this out here. So I'm going to do two. In fact, I may have already done two. I may have already done two there. Uh, and so I'm back to square one, which is right there. So it could be that I'm there. I don't know. I might need to decrease one more stitch. And you know, if I counted my stitches, I'd probably be better off. And like I said, in knitting, it may you may need to count your stitches. I don't know. But I've done quite a bit. I have quite a bit of this. Look at that. I've, I've done many inches of this. And I do practice, and I'm thoughtful when I'm practicing. But honestly, I don't know how this happened. I don't know how that happened. Maybe y'all can tell me. How do you increase a stitch at the end of a row? I thought you just had a certain number of stitches and that's all you had, but maybe I'm not figuring it out like I should, but that's my knitting progress. Um, I hope y'all are being patient with me. I'm, I'm really trying to learn to knit. I want to learn to knit and be able to knit like a hat or a scarf or even a sweater and not be just, uh, making a lot of mistakes. I don't really want to make a lot of mistakes, but I did notice that in this particular sample, and I've got to take a minute to tell you this, right here is another mistake I found right there. I don't know what that is. If you know what that is, tell me what that is, but it's just like this random piece of yarn sticking out. Is that because I didn't tighten it up or did I drop a stitch there? Could that be what I did? I don't know. I don't know, but there it is in all its glory. I just don't know what I did. I just don't know. <laughs> Not a knitter right now. I hope to be a knitter though. I'd like to be um, bicraftual, which means you know you can craft more than one 
um, you can you can make things with more than one craft like crochet and knitting so I'm excited I'm trying to get back to uh, the number of stitches that I had before so I'll need to work on that now I think that's all I had as far as whips go because I'm working on several things for fall I'm not going to show those to you because uh, I'm working on a lookbook for fall and it'll be several patterns that are kind of coordinated or maybe just fall and winter patterns that I feel like would be fun to make for fall or winter so I'm working on that right now and the Dorothy sweater in the fall version might be part of that I don't know but um, I do love the stitch pattern the row pattern and the yarn that I'm using I love love it I love the prairie yarn it's so beautiful and it's fall colors so and thank you for the subscriber who wrote to me and said this is what color you should choose and she said prairie and I thought ah, it looked like everything else but honestly it is a little bit browner a little bit more subtle it's not as white and bright as the garden party colorway so there you go as promised I want to show you my progress on the diamond painting I'm working on. This is Two Sisters on the Terrace and a lot of you said you really like this. I'm going down here to get you a close-up of her face. Look at how beautiful that is. And again, there are no drills, right? There are only drills along her hat and under her chin right here. But there are no drills on her face or her hair or her ears. So, and her neck also that's open. So, the they're giving the, the artist the focus on the on the faces actually too there are no drills on the little girl's face either only on her hat and on her dress let me get in there where you can see that oh how beautiful this is this and none on the not on the hands either the hands are not drilled at all around the painting is our beautiful beautiful flowers see those flowers how pretty that is and then as you move up you can see that they're sitting in front of a river and I'm working on the river right now let me let this down I'll show you what it looks like this is the river right here and I'll show you that I'll put the light behind it and you can see how much I've done I have a little bit more to go I've got to do all the green right in here and more of the blue and then I'll be all finished I'm so excited I'll have this whole thing finished before in the next three nights probably it'll take me that long to get that done but let me turn this off and I'll show you again what it looks like so pleased with this it is so beautiful I really love it uh, it's a diamond dots as you can see right there in the upper corner of the painting it's uh, diamond dots which is a brand a very good brand their drills are always perfect and there are 33 colors which you can see right down there there are the 33 colors and they also put them on the other side which is very very helpful especially if you turn it upside down it makes it so much more uh, easy to finish so there you go and this whole thing is a 42 by 52 centimeters or 18 by 20 and a half 18 and a half by 20 and a half so that's how large this is going to be it's, it's not big it's this to me is a pretty small canvas see it's not I've, I've let it down to the point where I don't want to do it upside down I'm just going to do it right side up and so when I'm working on it I will take this part right here and I curl it underneath the underneath the easel right there I turn it under the very bottom right let me get my finger there right there I, I curl it under and so that way it's out of my way out of my lap and here is uh, the color the, the colored drills right here this is what they look like and there are the 33 colors and that's in an Elizabeth Ward bead storage set and um, I was this was recommended to me by another youtuber and so awesome I love these I don't use anything else now and if you look over here I'm all ready for the portrait of Dr. Gaucher well, I've done some of that work and then under here is I've, I've kitted up the Starry Night Santa the Starry Night Santa those are the colors in it and I have a set of Elizabeth Ward for each one of those right there and then I'm working on this one right here and of course I label them so I don't get them mixed up <laughs> but right now I'm working on the two sisters and I'll finish that before I move on to 
the other two paintings and I'll show you those right quick. Here is the Starry Night Santa that I talked about last week. I'll be starting this fairly soon. And there's the St. Francis of Assisi that I've already finished and I'm waiting to get that uh, sealed. I haven't sealed it yet. And then right behind Santa over here is the portrait of Dr. Boucher. And this is a Van Gogh painting right there. It's a painting of the doctor that helped him in his last days. And right here is where I finished up with them, right there. You can see it, I'm about halfway up. I'm about halfway finished with this picture. So um, I'll be getting that framed as well. And I'll hang it somewhere in my house. I just love the artic artistic work of this. I'm not loving the, uh, this, the uh, what it means or anything like that. I just love the, uh, the artist's work in here. It's when he was actually at his peak and um, was painting his most beautiful paintings. So this is also one of those that would qualify. Quite gorgeous. So anyway, there is a, a little recap of my diamond painting hobby uh, and where I stand right now. So back to the giveaways. All right, let's talk about giveaways. Today I have three frog or finish giveaways and y'all seem like you were interested in those. Very nice. And then I also have two giveaways. One is the crochet surprise that was not claimed and the other one was it's a wrap that weren't, weren't claimed. And the crochet surprise is the hat crochet surprise which is really cute. Let me get that over there where you can see it. Oops, I don't want to compromise that. There's the hat. It's got a little uh, bow right here. It's split in the back so that it fits your head probably a little bit easier. Um, it's a, you can make it in either size, small or medium, and it's, it looks very easy to make. I mean, there aren't that many rounds in it, and it's very, very doable. So that's the crochet surprise hat pattern, and the yarn is the sugar and cream in the denim colorway. It's really pretty. Get that up there where you can see that. That is really, really pretty color. It's not bluish blue, and it's not light blue. It's a denim blue. The color of your jeans. <laughs> Very cute. Love that. So Crochet Surprise will be given away today. Uh, it also comes with some berry white tea that's in the box. So all those come in the box. The yarn to make the hat and all that will come with it. And there are also some photos here that help you know where you are in your journey to making that hat. So that hat will go out to someone today. Now, also today we're giving away It's a Wrap. This is the Red Heart It's a Wrap really beautiful um, enough for a shawl and the yarn is a size one but it's you know it's substantial and it's cotton it's um, let me see what's in it let me quickly tell you this is thriller is the the colorway and this is made from half cotton and half acrylic half cotton and half acrylic there are a lot of yards on here too there are 1100 yards on here enough to make a, a really nice shawl so that will go out to someone today both of those both of those gifts now this gift is a frogger finish and the yarn is the soft and sleek DK yarn from Hobby Lobby it was $4.99 a, a, a cake and I think I got it on sale there are two cakes here that, that I'm giving away and the Agnes sweater I've already I've already started it it's really soft and stretchy. Love this. I love this pattern. I have started several Agnes's and I'm frogging them out and someone pointed that out to me and they're exactly right. Um, because I try to select something easy if I've got a new yarn, I'll select something easy to make and the Agnes sweater is very easy to make. It's a sleeveless top, not a tank top, but it has actual shoulders on it. And I really love that pattern. It's easy to make and it's uh, pretty mindless, honestly, until you get to the armhole. And there's a little decreasing there, a little bit for the neck, but nothing fancy about the body of the sweater. It's, it, you know, it fits nicely, but I wanted to give this away because I won't have time to finish it. Again, this is the Agnes sweater, frogger finish, and the yarn to go with it. If you use the keyword Agnes, you're good to go. Now, another frogger finish that I had is the Unity Beyond. A lot of people were interested in this. This is a uh, cotton and linen combination and it's a size three yarn. It is a frogger finish. I didn't get very far on this one, but it is also the Agnes sweater. So that's what it looks like. 
and uh, it's it would be really pretty if I finished it but I just don't have time I've got other things going on so I decided to give this away and there are three three uh, skeins of that enough to make an Agnes sweater shouldn't be any problem with that now the third gift is uh, two cakes of Kobu yarn and then a little bit of another one I'll just send it all on to you but two cakes of the Kobu yarn I love this yarn I love this yarn I wonder if they have it in kind of an uh, autumn color I might like to use it for one of my lookbook um, patterns but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that but I do love this yarn it's, this is cotton and rayon from bamboo and it's called Kobu 232 yards on the cake so there are two full cakes and a part of another one and you can still buy this is the beige colorway so if you happen to win this you can buy more yarn to go with it or just make something out of that particular yarn so those are all our giveaways going out today so let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins these gifts here we are at the computer and I'm going to select a winner that um, didn't have to put a special text in. The two winners. One will be for the crochet surprise and one will be for it's a wrap. So let's see how many comments total that we had on our video last week. 281. Okay, so let me scroll over here and let's pick it's a wrap. This is for the it's a wrap cake of yarn by Red Heart. Very beautiful. It's a wrap. And this goes to Michelle McDavid, Michelle McDavid. Oh, and let's see. Well, she doesn't have to have a specific text in there. So let's pick another winner. And this will be for the uh, crochet surprise box of the hat and the yarn to go with it. So Monica Jackson, you have won the crochet surprise. The crochet surprise goes to Monica Jackson. Congratulations to both winners. Now let's scroll over here and these were specific keywords for these two, these three giveaways actually. One is for Agnes and let's type that in. Oh, let me get down here and uh, text and let's type in Agnes. A-G-N-E-S. Let's type in the word Agnes and then we're going to answer our question, which is 12. And then let's get our YouTube comments. So these are the people who wrote the word Agnes in their comment. So there would be 226 people. So let's scroll over here and find out who wins the, um, who wins the Hobby Lobby, um, DK yarn that I had started the Agnes. This is a frog and finish. And you can frog it or finish it. That would be Ramona Kalman. Ramona Kalman, you have won the Hobby Lobby yarn and the frog or finish Agnes sweater. So if you don't have the Agnes sweater, I'll send you the pattern for that. And I'm not going to say that. Don't say that, Jeannie. Be smart. Okay. Now, let's go back and the person that wrote in Unity and their comment will be in the running for this particular win. And that is, oh, I've got to answer this question. 11, okay. And let's find out how many people are wanting this. 193, so your chances are better on this one. So this is for the Unity, um, Unity Yarn and the Frogger Finish, Kathy Dixon. Kathy Dixon, you've won the Unity Yarn. And so that's kind of pretty. I like it. And there is a word in her comment. So, uh, Kathy, you have won that. Congratulations. Now let's scroll over here, and we're going to change this to the Kobo. And this is C-O, Kobo, excuse me, Kobo Yarn. And the, no, I have to answer another question. Let's see. 13 is the answer for that one. So let's go over here. Who wrote Kobu in their comment? And there were 198 people. So we'll scroll over here. And who wins the two cakes of Kobu and a little bit extra? <laughs> and that would be Barbara King. Barbara King, and there's her word Kobu in her comment. So Barbara, you have won the Kobu yarn. Congratulations to all five winners. I hope you enjoy your gifts. Please contact me with your mailing address and let me know 
where to send your gift. And you can send that to Jeannie at On The Hook Crochet. The spelling is in the description box, so you can go there and look for it. But be sure that you send your uh, mailing address to me and send me an email and say, winner in the <laughs> subject box. Or I'd prefer that you tell me in the email what you won. If you would tell me that, that would be helpful. And, and I can double check it, make sure you're a subscriber, and then we will send it right out to you. So be sure you do that right away. Two of those gifts, as I said before, were not claimed. And I don't know why, but sometimes people go on vacation or they forget to look and then they miss their opportunity. So it goes to someone else and someone else will be getting those this week, hopefully. Send me your name and your mailing address. I will get those right out to you as soon as possible. Now join me next time. We are having a giveaway for the Crochet World magazine. This is the magazine for August of 2022. A wonderful, wonderful magazine. And there are some really beautiful afghans in here. Uh, there, they can be summer colors, but I'd say uh, you can make that for fall or winter. Beautiful, beautiful colors. And it's also a, like a maybe a six-sided or eight-sided lapgan, they call it. Here is Afghan Squared, which was uh, featured on the front of the magazine. There it is right there. And the pattern for that is in the magazine. So um, it's wonderful. Here's another one called Lake House. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. It's really, really pretty. And it's stunning. Those are triangles. They're just kind of mixed up. Um, the way they're looking on the on the couch. It looked like they were in odd uh, shapes, but they're really triangles like that. There's one there. See, it's just been folded right there. But that's called Lake House. That's another really pretty afghan. There are lots of afghans in here this week. There's also a pretty table runner, too. If you like to do table runners, there you go. Look at that. I kind of love those uh, stitch patterns on there. I love those stitch patterns. And this is 13 by 40, so... You know, why couldn't you make a scarf like that? I don't know why you couldn't, but that's really pretty. There's a doily for you doily lovers right there. Very pretty, too. Uh, let's see what else is in here. I seem like I saw a tote. This is a tote, which is a kind of a geometric tote. It's flat, though. There's no gusset in there, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm partial to gussets. I love gussets in purses. Uh, I think they add so much, obviously, they add depth to the purse. <laughs> and, and the gusset is the piece that goes around the side that is about two or three inches wide that sets the front away from the back. And so you have a, uh, a deeper purse. Rather than it being flat like that, you have a deeper purse and you can get more stuff in it, which is what I like to do. <laughs> I have lots of stuff in my purse. I've always had a full purse, always had a full purse, and, you know, can barely carry the thing around sometimes. So that is mostly what I see in here. That's pretty much all I see that um, would be worth showing to you. Actually, let me show you this page. This is the page with all the things that are in this magazine, all the projects that are in here. There's that doily right there. And there's some other things in here. Lots of pillows and afghans. There's a pillow at the bottom right down there like that. That's pretty too. There's some beautiful things in here as there always is in the Crochet World magazine. I'm giving this away. It's a brand new edition, August of 2022, and I will be sending that out to someone next week who uses the word bags, B-A-G-S, right there. It's on the front of the magazine. They're touting their bags in here. I don't love the bags. I know that they don't have gussets in them, and they should have a gusset, and you can always put a gusset in there by crocheting maybe 10 stitches and then doing maybe 60 rows and then whipping it on the front and the back, and you can make a gusset uh, in a purse very easily. Now, here's a pretty purse. This has not got a gusset in it, but it is a round purse with a round oval bottom, so that's pretty. I like that. I like that. Let's see what kind of yarn they're using there. This is 13 by 14 inches tall and not including the, the strap. So the, the bottom and the base of the purse is 13 by 14 and you make it with chunky Burnett Maker Home Deck and you've seen that I'm sure at Joann's they have that. So very beautiful magazine. Love this. And this will go to a winner next week who uses the word bags in her comment. Also, I'm giving away two patterns. I'm taking the week off. I was going to go through my stash, and I thought, oh, I just really don't want to do that. 
uh, the magazine came and I thought I'll give that away and I'll give away two patterns. I'll give a pattern to two separate people of your choice from my Etsy shop. So you can pick one and uh, I will email you the PDF and you, uh, you'll have the pattern. You won't have to pay for it. So two patterns and a crochet world next week. So those will be our three winners. I hope you have a wonderful day again, July 4th. It's an awesome, awesome day of our independence. So be sure to celebrate it some way or just think about the freedoms that you have. They're a wonderful thing to have and our country is so blessed to have the freedoms that we do. So enjoy it. Enjoy it every single day. I hope you have a wonderful week. And next time I'll see you probably on Monday. And I hope you have uh, a good weekend next weekend as well. And join me next Monday to find out what's on the hook. <laughs>